I would like, if I may, to take you on a, on a strange journey. You're not ready for it. So let me tell you about two of the coolest women I've ever stumbled across. It all started with uh, this painting I found on a Facebook group. So bear with me. Um, the weird part about this is that the two women that I found from this painting are not secondhand finds. So Cora Best, she was an uh, interdisciplinary mountaineer and Audrey Shippen was her filmographer. They met during uh, Cora's lecture of, or at, sorry, the Alpine Club of Canada. But before we get there, I'm gonna use a pointy thing. It's gonna be super fun. Uh, <laughs> this is the best journey I found in their travels. So as recounted by journalist M.W. Childs in 1927, the two women known for exploring the American wilderness stalked off to Manchurian China, as you can see up there. Uh, I didn't need this, but I really liked it. Uh, <laughs> So at this time, the Chinese Revolution happened. Uh, on April 12, 1927, the uh, Shanghai Massacre occurred. And from April 1927 through May 1, 1950, uh, China was having their civil war. So Cora Best and Audrey Shippen decided to go to Manchurian China uh, to find exotic Snow leopards. <laughs> so the two women in their hunt for snow leopards not only kind of found that, but they also found danger at the hands of menacing bandits firing revolvers to ward off unseen assailants. Best and Shippen managed to escape by traveling by foot, by train, and even donning yellow face from Shippen's artist palette to darken their faces uh, just to ward off all those assailants. At some point, Best suffered dysentery and hid in the bottom of a boat, grounded on a mud bank while Shippen nursed her back to health. So in all my findings from them, they were, quote, just friends and <laughs> gal pals and companions. I'm not correlating. I'm just, they were with each other for a decade in the mountains, and it was great and cold. <laughs> Continuing with their epic journey, the women finally escaped from China on a Japanese ship. Once in Japan, they climbed several peaks in Hokkaido, Japan's northernmost island, and then headed south to Mount Fuji, where they promptly summited the volcanic skier that led to the peak of the tallest mountain in Japan. Okay, so she suffered from dysentery. <laughs> they were seeking snow leopards climbing mountains, and then ended up here. This eventually was widespread coverage all over the Americas, as you can see behind me. Uh, but the promotional notices uh, toted her fearless adventures. This uh, presumably gave her credibility when it came to criti criticism, because the 1920s versions of the American Mail, in best own words, not mine, but best, uh, she says about the American Mail that they looked like modern Ajax, uh, but, was, but they were uh, weak and easily frightened, not least of all because he thought playing nine holes of golf counted for exercise. <laughs> Channeling this, so she's channeling the spirit of Theodore Roosevelt. Best made it clear the all important racial implication of her critique of the American masculinity, the whole life of the white race, she told the audience of Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, depended on learning how to live, to eat, exercise properly, and to really live. Very epic. So, and clearly, this responsibility, no sex. Uh, in mountain climbing, she quoted, which was not her demanding climbers take a vow of celibacy, but rather to off-stated belief that nothing prevented women from taking the challenge of the great outdoors. So, fuck yeah. <laughs> so, Best and Shippen are not household names as of 2019. So right now, nobody maybe knows about them, except maybe me and my 
how I found them. So I came across this painting uh, about a month ago in a Facebook group called Weird Secondhand Finds. This will, <laughs> you can find house hippos and vomit clocks. Come to find me later to find out how. Uh, it's super fun. So in that, we found this painting from Audrey Shippham. This is a self-portrait of her, or at least I believe it is, because her photos look a lot like this painting. Um, we know that Audrey Shippham painted this. She was born in Lyon, New York, March 23rd, 1883. She lived in uh, Burlingame, uh, California, from 1940 to 1959, and then died in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in 1975. Shippham, in her adventure, carried painting gear, photography gear and motion picture equipment up fucking mountains and accompanied Cora Bust. Uh, but beyond that, we don't know anything about Audrey Shippham. And the reason that I found out and my group found out actually that she's from Burlingame is because on the back of her painting, it had a uh, notation of, I guess she was showing it at an art gallery in her address. So I actually have the address and I have pictures of her house. It's quite lovely. Uh, <laughs> So Audrey is wonderful, and going on to Cora Johnston Best, uh, who is the main star of their story. She was born in Minneapolis in 1884. Uh, when she was a young girl, she received a postcard depicting an alpine mountain vista. While the postcard only cost two cents at the time, it nevertheless set her off on a lifetime of discovery. So now before I detail any further adventure, there is a lot of adventure. I have to warn you, nobody has written a biography of Cora Best or Audrey Shippen. And it's of the utmost importance to keep in mind that Best and Shipman were taking their audacious achievements the women, during the women's suffrage movement in the United States, and the, which finally succeeded, obviously. Um, but it did not, as we sadly know, result in instant equality for women. And so Best and Shippen continued their struggle. So Cora Best wore a lot of hats and coats and pants and boots and mountain climbing gear and then some. Uh, she was a medical doctor, a sought after lecturer, a tireless advocate for exploring and preserving the natural world a talented alpinist, and for those with a shorter resume, a high capacity overachiever. I'm gonna take a breath, because that was a lot. <laughs> she certainly had some downtime. Uh, so Cora spent nine summers in Yellowstone National Park, then turned her attention to Canada. In 1922, she became the first female section head of the Alpine Club of Canada, Best chaired the Alpine Club meetings from 1923 and 1924 at Curtis Hotel in Minneapolis. Uh, the group offered women a freedom uh, to travel and take on athletic challenges that were previously reserved for only men. Uh, some members went on achieving first ascents while others took part in scientific research, such as glacial retreat studies. So at the time, women were not seen as capable mountaineers. Uh, men often removed women's names from expedition lists and rarely allowed them to lead on difficult routes. So one 1920 a uh, newspaper even claimed that female clients, uh, climbers should be disciplined for wearing mountaineering pants in public. So I'm not sure how severe the discipline was, but they got spanked or something, or maybe worse, I did find, um, I did find photographs of girls getting arrested in bathing suits, which is like the opposite of wearing pants, but... <laughs> That's not this talk, that's a future talk. Uh, so it was during one of these Alpine Club meetings that Best and her climbing partner, close friend Audrey Shippham, uh, and the, uh, met each other. And the two of them chased adventure together for more than a decade. So Shippham's role was to document their adventure and it played a major part into convincing the public that women were or could be as tough adventurers alongside even surpassing their male counterparts. So again, the historical records is not entirely clear on how Best and Shippham explored versus with each other or without each other. 
Most of the stories I found say it's just best. Most of the other stories I found were them both. So they were together for about a decade. So it was during one of these club meetings that um, they just sought out and historical uh, records is not entirely clear, like I mentioned. So Best was the first women to guide up uh, hikers up Mount Ordinay, uh, and Shipham scored the first female ascent of uh, Mount Huckabee. So a route that is a 4,000 foot sheer drop along its Final approach. So while working on uh, the sorry, while working with the famous mountaineer Conrad Kane, they recorded first ascents on Mount Iconoclast and several other peaks in British Columbia. So one of the biggest alpine peaks, <laughs> yes. Uh, so you can scream mountains too. Uh, one of the biggest alpine challenges of the 1920s was. Mount Rubson or the Great White Fright, it's 12,972 feet. Best attended the 1924 ACC camp with her sights to set being the first woman to summit the heavy glacial peak. Uh, her attempt in August was cut short due to bad weather. And uh, Canadian Phyllis Monday uh, sum summited days later. Undaunted, Best returned in September and made the ascent in record time, hauling movie moving picture gear and cameras with Shippam uh, alongside the mountain. So. Best may have been the first woman granted a full guiding license for all United States and Canada uh, throughout their national parks. If she wasn't the first, she was among the earliest. She and Shippam joined the Trail Riders of the Canadian Rockies, a group that include royalty, riders, and Hollywood stars. Best and Shippam became the first to paddle Big Bend a 200-mile stretch of white water in the Columbia River in Canada. So had Bess left promoting her success in the wilderness to a more traditional publicist of the era, we'd know less, like even less than I know now that I found in a group on Facebook <laughs> and online. Uh, but she took self-promotion into her own hands. Uh, she was able to promote during lectures, so she had her accomplishments there uh, to help convince her audience that women had as much to ride as, st uh, to, sorry, as much at state uh, up mountain summits as men. Her she would have traveling lectures, so she would have talks like unblazed trails in uh, shining peaks, covering wilderness adventure in the Canadian Rockies, uh, hell roaring water detailing her 200 mile canoe down a dangerous Columbia River, and kingdom clouds uh, recounting her successful efforts as the first white person to reach a summit of Mount Pope in the interior of British Columbia. Uh, Best was not directly promoting Canadian or American West as a tourist destination or as a repository of lucrative natural resources. She extolled uh, the benefit and strenuous outdoor activity calling for the appreciation of North Americans' natural splendors, endorsing conservation, and pitched visual education as a valuable teaching tool. So according to a 1927 featured article, Best was, quote, short, stout, and looked like a librarian. <laughs> so this librarian is climbing mountains and a badass. So I wanted to fit this in but I really couldn't. So this is a large list of most of her achievements. You know, she went up Iconoclast Mountain, which I touched on. Uh, Best and Shippen were the first uh, to climb the summit of Mount Huckabee. And the list continues. Oh, and they went and decided to bring a bunch of people towards this place called Death Trap in Canada, which is a super fun name. If you haven't gone, I highly recommend it. <laughs> So, oh, it, <laughs> yes, maybe. In addition to all of the amazing achievements Best and Shippen did, Best actually had her own little versions of Odd Salon. So she and her husband, yes, she was married <laughs> with the husband and not Audrey, 
it was a travesty, regardless. <laughs> They had their own versions of salons at their house, you know, entertaining writers, poets, adventurers, politicians, scientists, and her success as a traveling lecturer during the silent film era only stands as prime example what a woman could achieve in a new world of documentary newsreels. Ironically, we still re know relatively nothing about the Best in Shippum story. And only a handful of Shippen's photos have survived, and none of her films during the lectures actually have survived. I haven't been able to find any of them, which is sad. But they are amazing women, and I highly recommend you research them. So one of the greatest tragedies of Cora Best and Audrey, like I touched on, is that nobody has written a biography about either of them, at least not one that I could find. So however, this best autograph found in a trail writer of the Canadian Rockies pamphlet sums up the remarkable intelligence, stamina, and talent, and general fucking badassery of Best and Shippen that brought out from one another. So of a decade of them being together, this is the last thing that I was able to find is what Cora Best wrote. And uh, let's raise a glass. So. Yours till the bears get me. <laughs> Thank you, Annetta.